Well, that was an interesting conversation with uh, Paul Misener. We found out actually about uh, what time he wakes up and Paris as well. We also found out, are there any IE students from the business school? Hi, everybody. Well, you know now that Paris is a millennial. He just uh, has white hair. That doesn't mean he's not a millennial. What else did we learn? We also learned that it's not UX by CX. It's not the user experience, but the user is a customer. OK? It's, it's, it's easier, and it's um, closer to our hearts to have customers. OK, I'm going to ask the audience that is coming in to, to uh, come down here. There's, a lot of, there's plenty of spaces at the, at the front. Please don't be shy. And those who are leaving, shame on you. Please do it in silence. <laughs> Somebody's listening to me. I'm so happy to hear that. OK, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up. We have no time to wait. Let's give them a little bit more of a chimpun. Come on, a chimpun. Thank you to the first row, very energetic. This is to wake you up, guys, uh, in case you're thinking of coming here to have a siesta. No way, no way. I can see you all from here. OK, we talked about machine learning. We talked about, oh, he's coming to kick me out already. Oh, he's kicking, OK. We talked about, I was saying, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, Amazon, of course. Another big word I bring for you, another big word, which is open innovation. Oh, everybody talks about open innovation. But it might seem like a fashion word we just came up with. No, no, my friends. As you know, this was started or invented or came up with uh, at the beginning of the century by uh, Chesbro, Henry Chesbro from Berkeley University. But what has happened since then? Does everybody already know what it is and has done something about it? Well, the next panel is going to give us some clues and answers to questions. We have a bunch of collaborators and uh, startups and connectors and network and corporation to tell us, well, different angles of what's going on in open innovation as a society. Is there a value in collaborating? Is it a real one or is this just BS? Sorry, excuse my language. What are the common mistakes that we make and what are the issues that need to be solved? Okay, so. To take care of these questions and answer them, hopefully, we have a fantastic panel. I'm going to name them all, because there are five people, there's five people, and then we'll give them a round of applause at the end, OK? All right, we have the head of NL Innovation Hub, she's Fabio Tentori. We have Telefonica Innovation Ventures Director, she's Genia Wavendo. Genia Wavendo. We have Scarlett Siever, she's the Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer of Catalyst Consulting Group. We have also the co-founder and CEO of Mindsay, Guillaume Laporte. And we have us, our dear Marisol Menendez, she's the Chief Operation Open Innovation Officer of Spain Startup South Summit. Let's welcome them all. Welcome them all. Hello, Marisol, here. Marisol, Fabio, you want to take a picture? Ah, she wants yes. to take a picture. So she comes with these crazy ideas, taking okay. selfies and stuff. <laughs> OK, yes, so. Let's take see. a selfie. Take guys. a selfie, you see? Oh, no, take one with the audience. Yeah, okay, yeah well, I'm with the audience. With Come on, the well. everybody. Audience, say hi. Scarlett. Oh, oh sorry. Hey, lift your hair. Uh, Not your yeah. hair, your hands. Uh, your hair as well. Woo. Works. Woo. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Okay, so Marisol, Fabio, here, okay. uh, here, Charlotte, when, Genia, everybody. <laughs> How's everyone doing after lunch? Yeah. <laughs> well, Couple they are tired, ago, guys. <laughs> Tough audience. How are you today? <laughs> are you okay? Yes! <laughs> okay. Well, really, um, we are really excited, you can notice, about being here today. 
I'm super thrilled to have uh, here this amazing panel. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Marisol Menendez, Head of Open Innovation at, BB at South Summit, sorry. And um, frankly, I'm an Open Innovation geek, geek, if anything. So for me, this is a unique opportunity to he have this magnificent, uh, magnificent panel with us here today. But it's not about me, it's about you guys. How about if you begin introducing yourselves uh, in a tweet? What do you do? Who you are? How's your life? <laughs> I go first? Let's begin. So I'm, Genia. I'm Genia Gavendo, and I am responsible for Telefonica Innovation Ventures. I think every, when you talk about open innovation, people know more about WIDA as a brand for Telefonica. But besides WIDA, we also have other vehicles that we use to work with startups. We do direct investments in companies all over the world, and we also invest as limited partners in VC funds in some key markets for us as Silicon Valley and some of the markets where we are present. That's amazing, and everyone knows Telefonica and everyone knows Waira. Fabio, what about I'm you? Thank you. Um, maybe uh, now that we're talking about open innovation, a lot of people know about Enel, and now Enel does open innovation. I am the CEO of Enel Innovation Apps, uh, which is the arm of the company which is doing uh, innovation. I manage a few innovation hubs around the world, uh, in San Francisco, in Boston, uh, in Brazil, in Chile, in Italy. We have three. Uh, we have one here in Madrid, and then we are in Russia and, and in Israel as well, as I was saying before. We scout for the best startups in the energy sector to collaborate directly with uh, Enel. Amazing. Scarlett? Yes, so Scarlett Sieber, I am with uh, CCG, and what we do is we're a global consulting firm that really looks at the executive strategy, the digital and innovation <coughs> implementation, uh, really centered around things that we'll probably talk about here, uh, including technology, talent, and culture, which is one of, you know, I believe one of the biggest impediments of, of innovation success. Amazing, and Guillaume? Yeah, so I'm Guillaume, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a tech company uh, based in Paris called Mindsay. Uh, we are 60 people, uh, two years old startups specialized in conversational AI. So everything that is related to chatbots, voice bots, customer support automation. Um, and we are very specialized in one industry, the travel industry, so we work with airlines, airports, travel agencies, and all major companies. So they all have open innovation strategies, and we've been in discussions with um, many of them over the past two years. So yeah, pretty much in that space. A small company working with the huge guys. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I don't know, have you noticed something about this panel? We have a startup, we have a connector, we have a corporation, and we have an experienced player in the open innovation arena. And you know, the basic definition of open innovation at the end is mix and match and learn from the perfect mixture of, of experiences. And I think that that's why it's interesting to have all these perspectives. At the end, what I want you to, to have is a global perspective on how is it really working with open innovation. And I think we can begin with you, Genia, because uh, you've been a long time in the road, in the open innovation road. and. Um, when you're experiencing and living open innovation, of course, not everything is sweet, but you still have good results and we keep doing it for something. What lessons did you learn in the way? Um, as you said, Telefonica, um, we are pioneers in working with startups. We have been doing this for quite some time. And today, open innovation and startups, they are, it's part not only of the innovation area, it has, like all business areas, when they are developing a product or doing something, they already think, you know, that they should look and go for a startup. This is great news. You were able to create this hollow effect in the organization. The reality of making this happening, so I think the mentality is there in order to get things to work, uh, it's amazing when it works. I think it's a win-win for Telefonica and for the startups. We get fast time to market. We get access to amazing technology. And for the startup, we are generating business for them. We are either reselling and generating revenues or we are buying their technology, which is revenues anyways. So it, it is a great, but uh, it is easy 
no, it's not easy. You know, it's, um, it, it's difficult, but we, the more we do it, the better we get at it. And at the end, it's all about the resources that you put in place to support all these processes and the interfaces that you have. You have to keep the interfaces as simple as possible, not only in terms of processes like purchasing or legal, but also in terms of systems integration to make it really easy for a small company to go there and, and plug uh, into our solutions. I think, Fabio, you do have as well experience in how to really integrate within the organization how to be ready and prepared to absorb this innovation. In my experience, the reality of working with, with others, with the startups, with other institutions, needs to have an integrity within the organization. Mm -hmm. How do you do it within so, the corporation? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, as, um, um, as we were saying before as well, you need, to, you need two or three things to work properly. The, the first one is like alignment uh, between the top management and whoever is doing innovation. And this alignment comes uh, uh, by the fact of putting innovation in an important role in the company. For us, uh, in Enel, innovation together with sustainability are key pillars uh, of our strategy, our strategic plan. And this is extremely important. And then you put innovation um, at, at the top level, I directly report into the CEO, but at the same time inside each of the business line of the group, so that you can be really, I would say pervasive. Pervasive is a bad word maybe in English, but it's like you need to be everywhere. Everywhere in your company, you need to look for needs, look for things that need to be changed, and then bring in startups with a fresh view, a fresh mind to do things in a completely different way. And the way to connect uh, these two pieces uh, is uh, by creating a platform, which is digital, of course, uh, that reaches everybody within the company, everybody on this platform. We, we call it open innovability. Everybody on this platform can put their need, can put like uh, what the problems that they have uh, in their day-to-day -day job and what they think is going to happen in the future of a particular industry. And we reach each of them, we select the best of these needs, and then we go to the ecosystem, thanks to this platform, and we ask to startups, do you have a solution for us? Mm -hmm. And then if they have a solution, we do the matching, and we are able to monitor all of this. Yeah, it's a complete process, done, top to down, and integrated, exactly. up until the connection with the startup. Exactly. Startups that live it in real life, like Guillaume, while working with these huge um, companies as you do, how do you leave it from the other side? <laughs> um, it's a, a very good thing, and it also has very bad points. So it's like high highs and very low lows. Um, the high highs is that when you're a startup and you signed a POC or you signed a contract, a proof of concept, if you're a POC, everyone is familiar, um, it's great news because it's usually a good amount of money to fund your company. But uh, the bad news is it's going to be very long, <laughs> very painful to discuss with the stakeholders because, as you said, maybe not everyone is aligned, etc. They maybe not have gone through your platform properly. Um, and, uh, and yeah, in those delays and those misalignments can cause the death of the startup. So it's basically, it's like your startup, you're a little monkey, and you enter this cage with like some big lions and elephants, and any of them makes a wrong move and you're dead. Uh, but it's good to be among the, the big ones. Um, so the way we, we approach it is the first ones are the most criticals. Like the first collaborations that a startup do with a big corporate are the most important ones. So um, having a good like, sponsor in the corporate is essential. Someone usually that have already some experience either working at the startup or working with startups is key um, so that the processes can go different, like uh, the procurement, like taking three months to make one uh, bill and taking then 60 days to be paid is not possible for a startup. Um, so having the good sponsor to speed up those things, and this is also essential. And then having clear guidelines of how to make this project successful. successful. This is also very useful, because otherwise you can work for one year, two years, three years for the corporate, and you don't know if it's good or bad. Um, so that's a little bit how we experienced starting working with corporates. And now we work with a 
25 companies in seven countries, uh, all large companies like Iberia and Vueling, two major airlines in Spain, uh, but also you know, airlines in, in across the globe in different continents. That's amazing. You know, um, uh, we were discussing yesterday in Open Innovation Forum about this, and um, we know that uh, we, we concluded that the internal sponsorship it's even an emotional sponsorship because people get engaged in the project further uh, than just the, the strict result, no? And I know, Scarlett, that you have strong experience in making these match, matches happen. Um, uh, so what's your perspective? You oversee the ecosystem. You see these guys connecting to these others. And is the US a market quite different from what happens worldwide? So I've looked at this problem or opportunity, depending on how you think about it, from every angle. First, as a startup myself, uh, who was selling into large corporates, in this case, large media and events, and then I was CIO and spending a lot of time looking at this from the banking side. Of course, when we were doing this together at BBVA and then for other institutions, uh, financial institutions in the United States, and now as a connector. And so for me, I think if I'm building off of what both of, of you said in terms of what that looks like, it's really about transparency more than anything else. And so it's transparency from the corporate side, from your perspective, talking about realistic timeframes and, and expectations. Certainly big corporates, because of the scale of what we have been with, um, it takes us a little bit longer to do things. But as, as, as direct as you can be and as, as um, forward you can be with the startups to say, hey, we're really interested in what you're doing, but this is going to be, you're not going to see any real results for the first year. Um, and then on the startup side too, because one, one challenge, especially when you are you know, a global company, is that sometimes they have very specific reasons why they're interested in you, like uh, access to your customers at scale, because that's one of the, the challenges as startups are growing, they really don't have. And so it's being very, very explicit with your key takeaways and what you're hoping to get out of the relationship. And kind of building from there, and I would say just to piggy off of, piggyback off of the comment that you made, certainly executive sponsorship and sponsorship is key, but another statistic, um, open innovation roles industry-wide, these CIO types or head of innovations, the typical tenure is about 18 months. So one of the challenges that ends up happening is you have that executive sponsor and then you move forward and that sponsor is no longer there. So it's, it's almost getting like two or three of those key mm -hmm. people. So it's not, you know, you're not attaching yourself to one horse, but rather the whole, the whole group. Sure. I just wanted to add something regarding the transparency. I think it's a key element. Uh, it also differs on culture, therefore countries. I have the impression that in the US, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, uh, you're, you're more informed than me, <laughs> but um, I have the impression that when I talk to corporates in the US, they're very formal in the beginning, you know, formalities, hi, hey, where are you from, blah, 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 weather. Uh, but then when you start to talk project, it's like no bullshit. It's like, okay, how much are you going to pay? How much are you going to pay me? Uh, how long is it going to take? And uh, what results do we expect? Like the discussion become real very quickly. And I had this experience, uh, you know, at least in France, but also in other European countries, where the discussion stays at the formalities for weeks, if not months. And, yeah. um, and this is also a deadly disease for startups, you know. And I, 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 I think, <laughs> sorry, no, please go ahead. You were touching European <laughs> aspects here yeah. and American yeah. well, no, I'm not saying all, I'm just saying I noticed no, no, that, I noticed this, yeah. yeah. I totally agree, and I think uh, when you say, Stacey, it's all about managing expectations. I think this is a key element of building the trust with the startup. What works for us in Telefonic is be that we have dedicated people that their full-time job is to help <coughs> startups work with us. So they can help us navigate all the complexities. We do coaching. We help translate what the business area is saying, because sometimes people are saying, oh, I'm going to have this soon. When is soon for a startup, it can be next month, but for a business area, it can be in three quarters. So we have to have these people in the middle educating and being the translators and facilitating on both sides. And this is something that has been working for us. It can be better, of course. It always can be yeah, better. Yeah, it's it's and I, and I want to add on this, which is uh, um, yes, exactly. I, I was going to add that that you need to have dedicated people that do that because once you find the sponsor, as we were saying before, the sponsor maybe is not going to be there anymore in six months, or it's going to get promoted. 
promoted or whatever, it's going to be in the other part of the company. So you need a structure which allows you to be always present uh, and you know to do real innovation. And the best way to do that as well is to put, uh, in my opinion, the urgency of time on the people that in corporations are doing uh, innovation, do which you... means uh, goals that they need to be reached in the short, in the medium, and in the long term. You give them goals, they need to deliver something, they need to deliver projects with startups, they need to deliver a certain way of doing things, they need to deliver value to the company. And if you put the urgency of time, then all of these discussions that go on forever, they're not going to happen, because the discussion that goes on forever is never going to bring any value. For sure. And you, I know, agree. you just touched a really critical point, I think, which is the KPIs. <coughs> because in, in, in Mexico, we have a saying like, tell me how they measure you, and I will tell you how you behave. You know? <laughs> and um, I think that the fight of KPIs within the organization and also the alignment of these KPIs to whatever you want to achieve, for example, as a startup, is critical to ensure this trust and this transparency. You know? Do you perceive this from your perspective, for example, Guillem? I see that you want to jump. Mm. I want to give you... <laughs> well, not, not specifically, but the, the KPIs, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, like having clear KPIs, having clear objectives is, is the key to create urgency. I totally agree with you. Uh, it's not something that usually startups uh, wants to do because at the beginning we're very shy. Like it's, we're already really lucky to be working with these guys, you know. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but you know, like every business, you have to be a little bit pushy and say, okay, okay, but maybe you're gonna kill us in six months. So let's do something before then. Um, so I think KPIs is very very important, and the culture of results is not implemented everywhere yet. Uh, it will still need to do some progress in general in the ecosystems. Um, then I, I wouldn't want to go into which ones are better at this or not, but I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. So just real quick on that KPI piece too. I think one, so I, I love what you were saying about having the startups helping to set goals, but one thing that I've found effective, and this has been pretty rare, and I've worked with hundreds of startups in my corporate time, uh, a few of them said, what are my goals? Like, how am I being measured? So as CIO or head of innovation, how, how is my boss measuring me? Because what you'll find is depending on how sophisticated. So someone like Telefonica probably has pretty direct, and it probably has pretty direct KPIs, but then at least you know, looking from the financial service lens, we have 5,000 banks in the United States, and a lot of them are not very sophisticated in terms of their innovation initiatives. So if you were to ask them that question, they probably would have no clue how to answer it, which to you says, that's a problem, right? Like, that's probably not someone that, you know, we want to work with yet, or it could still be an interesting conversation because you could derive feedback on your product. They could learn more about you, but you just have to be prepared that this is probably not going to go anywhere. I think the, the issue with KPIs, yes, you have to measure everything because if you're not measuring, you don't uh, know if you're doing well. The danger is to use the wrong ones, mm -hmm. you know? And in some cases, uh, focus on too early on revenues or savings can drive the wrong behavior. So having these intermediate KPIs, as you were measuring, like, have I done a PLC? How did the technology work? Well, it's super important, not only you know, to, for both sides to see that the relationship is evolving, but for us to help a little bit of corporate anxiety yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> and but I think it's interesting here, the connection between the short-term, mid-term, and long-term yeah. objectives, and also uh, the alignment that this has with the general company strategy. You know, yeah. If your company is not working towards the disruption, then please do not waste time in disrupting or uh, maybe exciting startups about disruption. No, so yeah. you need to have this internal alignment. So, so uh, pay attention also to the fact that uh, I, I agree. Like in the long term, you need to deliver results, and you don't want to kill something too early. But don't be afraid of killing something. You know, like this is we are talking about innovation. Like if something doesn't work, it doesn't work for a year, it doesn't work for two. Maybe it's not because the startup is bad and the company is bad. It's maybe because there's no real way to do that together, and so. It's better if the startup goes somewhere else uh, and the company goes doing something different. I, you know, I that's totally agree. Like I couldn't agree more about this statement. We just let realized it. Go, it. No? Like <laughs> let, let it go, yeah. Because our, we had some projects with some corporates that lasted two years, and it was like a thousand euro per month. So we we're like, well, 
we keep it, yeah, no? It's a thousand yeah. euro per month. There is two of them. It's like two thousand euro. It's a small salary to pay, etc. But no, it's actually a bad, bad, bad decision. It takes your mind. It keeps a little bit of, you know, virus you. inside your mind. It drains yeah. you. You know, it's not going to succeed. You know, it's go not going to grow. So it drains you, you power. Get to yeah. you, get, you need to get rid of it. Uh, and and it's it's. It's difficult when the corporate doesn't take the decision, the startup doesn't take the decision, and the thing goes on, and it, it die in a painful disease instead of, you know, just breaking up properly, you know, and going on with your lives. <laughs> well, we have just uh, f a few minutes left. I'm thinking, and when I think, I tend to do a strange things, sorry. <laughs> but I'm thinking that maybe we could finish, like, with a roundup, with this perspective. I think with the, when we talk about the open innovation game, which is a collaboration game, which is about people, we, we all have all kinds of experiences. And all of you are seasoned open innovators. I suggest that we finish with a round of the best, the worst, and a call to action that you would do from your own perspective to the ecosystem. What do you enjoy most of working in open innovation? What do you think that we really need to put our hands on? And a call to action. I can start. Uh, <laughs> the best is, you know, you get to see all these amazing companies and all these amazing technology, meet all these amazing entrepreneurs every day. So this is it's energetic. The <laughs> it is energetic. It's uh, it's really cool. The worst is uh, what can really can get better. I would love to get this sense of urgency from the startups, really setting us the pace, you know, for corporates. And the call to action is let's do our homework to get this going. Taken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on my side, like the, the, the best uh, is totally the energy, same, same thing, like the, the energy, the possibility to access uh, technology, solutions, uh, anything that like within the company would be almost impossible, super long for us to build. So this is the best. Uh, uh, the bad part, like the worst, is that the processes, even if we structure them, we try to make them faster. In any case, we're a big corporation, and so there's a lot of work still to do on, and on the doing processes. Well, yeah? <laughs> but we still have to streamline yeah. them, and we will never stop to do that. Like we have to focus, especially my team, to do that in the best in the best way for the sake of startups and also for ourselves. And my call to action is that I really strongly believe that uh, uh, collaboration between start among startups and corporations is the right way forward uh, because they put the idea, the drive, uh, like the ability to go faster. And we can put the knowledge, we can put the facilities, the clients, and the combination of the two things working together would deliver solutions uh, that are like uh, better for the world in a faster way. Best part, I would say, is um, every single day is different, which I love. I get bored with the same thing over and over, and I am a big fan of cross-industry collaboration, so whenever I think I know something to a pretty strong degree and I become an expert, then I realize I'm actually not an expert at all, and I learn something else. Um, the most challenging part, I would say, or the, the bad part, I guess, is these internal bottleneck bottlenecks on the corporate side. And I really think that stems from a variety of things, but it goes back to culture um, and putting in place the right strategy because people are uh, against this for a variety of reasons. And a lot of it has to do with psychology is why they're against it. And so the call to action is corporates really focusing on at the executive level, the why, why are we doing this? And once that part is answered in the correct way and they're giving the right support, then I think everything else can move forward. Yeah. Um, just before I answer that, so I can put it in the, in the right way, uh, by raising hand, uh, who is actually a startup in the audience? Could you raise your hand? Oh, nice. Okay, like a 20% something. And who works at a more established company or corporate? Okay, so majority. Good. Um, so I'll put my answer towards the corporates then. Um, Sorry, who are neither? Yeah, <laughs> probably investors. Cool. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, anyway, so the, 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 the best part is uh, align everyone within the executive team on your strategy. Like, make sure that everyone, all the executive team is aligned to make innovation, to work with startups, because this ease up the process so well. 
Like when corporates are aligned, everything goes much quicker, et cetera, et cetera. When there's a couple of people that are not excited about this, everything goes slow. And the worst thing uh, is then, since there is a majority of corporates, is I'll say, going back to processes, et cetera, I say just fix your procurement to work with startups. Because three months procurements and uh, two months payment delays is not viable. So start to fix that before working with startups. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, we have uh, trust, transparency, and fixed procurement, guys. <laughs> Let's go for it. Thank you very much. Thank you for these amazing Thank panels. You.